Come on, come on. Hello, Kristen, Patty, Michael. So great to see you guys. Oh, good. Timothy, April. So, Gary, so great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I always wonder, is anyone going to show up today? Do they really appreciate me being here or is it just like out of boredom sometimes they stop by? Hey, Karen, Cindy, Debbie. Whoa. Too fast. Too fast. I can't even see anything anymore. Linda, Rebecca, Wendell. So great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm just going to give it another second or three <laughs> for you literalists, which I am. I'm the worst, right, guys? You know, I am very literal. I've actually had to uh, pray about and really work on not being quite so literal. I'm a very, God just made me a very black and white person. I'm not saying I've never walked in the gray areas. It's just that I love that there is black and white. I want to know when I'm in gray area. I don't want to wonder all the time, where is that line? It's like black and white, and I want to be on the white side, okay? All right, you guys ready? Hello, everybody. It's Michelle, your Frontline Patriot. I am here live at 4 with Unredacted Truth, and um, I got a call this morning, was that this morning? I guess it was actually just about lunchtime here, so it was this afternoon for him. Anyway, I have some really good news to share with you at the end, so stick till the end. If you are on Rumble or Facebook, I'm here live on Facebook right now, but if you are on Rumble or YouTube or Truth Social, or LinkedIn, or Twitter, or um, what's the other one? Telegram. Please, please, please like and subscribe and share and get my name out there because I'm going to have to be leaving Facebook one of these days. I know I've been threatening for years because they keep banning me. They keep restricting me. Um, they, they are trying to keep me from you, and I don't like that at all, even though they're all C underscore A platforms, every single one of them. Yes, I have been banned on Rumble. I have been banned on Telegram. I have been permanently banned on both Twitter and YouTube, although they did allow me to start other channels, and then they permanently banned me on my new channels. And now I just have on Twitter, I just have a an account where I'm able to look at other people's, but I'm not allowed, and share other people's, but I can't post my own posts. And on YouTube, they just take down like every two out of three posts that I put up, lives that I put up, and they delete my stuff forever, which is sad because YouTube literally, when they deleted me forever, when they banned my Rock Your Red Carpet channel, they actually, um, they destroyed 753 live videos I had done. They literally just completely eliminated them. Didn't give me an option to download them or anything. So they're not my favorite. Anyway, if you're seeing me there, thank you. Please like and subscribe. I have a surprise coming soon, and um, I'll be sharing more of that later. But right now I'm going to jump in with what's going on in the world, which is why you guys are all tuning in right now, right? All right. So I want to remind you of some scriptures and they all in one way or another say, everything that's hidden will be revealed. Everything done in the dark will be brought to light. Everything concealed will be revealed. All kinds of different ways they've said it, but they've said it in multiple scriptures, but just some, so you can test me on this. Um, Matthew, oops, sorry, Matthew 10, 26, Luke 8, 17, Mark 4, 22, Luke 12, 2, Hebrews 4, 13, just so many places in the Bible that God talks about bringing everything done in the darkness to light and exposing and I will tell you, this is a time of exposure. God is exposing everything. There are some major things that have been exposed in the last couple days. And actually the last 
three and a half years, major things have been exposed. And some of you haven't been paying attention. Others of you just woke up. It's like you've been in this, this sleep for the last however many years of your life and you're just waking up now. Um, some of you have had like fire hose of revelation over the last three years. So, and then some of us, God has kind of kept us in the know most of our lives. I, I learned about um, New World Order back when I was about 13 years old. So God has different reasons for revealing things to us at different um, at different times and at different, um, like the amount that he delivers at one time, he kind of spreads it out for some people and fire hoses others. And what I say is God knows us better than we know ourselves. So we know what we need. I have had revelation for so long. I've always said I'm always in the wrong place at the wrong time and I am hit in the face with truth that I cannot deny or ignore. So I thank God for that. Now in my spiritual maturity at my age, I'm thankful. But I'll tell you at the time, it's like I lost a lot of friends being confronted with truth where I couldn't just sit back and let it happen. I had to confront and I never really liked that about myself, but that's who God made me. I literally would get like this, like turmoil in my entire spirit, soul, and body that had to speak truth. It's just who he made me. So I'm thankful for it now, but I will tell you it was tough when I was younger because nobody wants to be that one. I was never a tattletale. I always went directly to the person and confronted them, but some of the things that I was met with were pretty demonic. I, I've actually seen some people in high positions in church leadership literally like demonically expose themselves. And um, I never really liked that. Now as a, as a grown, mature, meat-eating follower of Jesus, um, I will say that I'm thankful for it now because I no one can ever say that I'm asleep. I definitely am aware of everything going on. All right, so anyway, um, I wanted to give you those scriptures because I allude to it often that, oh, it says all over God's word, but I love to actually give people chapter and verse, book, chapter and verse, so that you can look it up for yourself and see that God's word is not only relevant for today, it is needed for today, for such a time as this, more than any other time in my life. And I've used God's word for, ever since I've been an adult, I started reading God's word regularly, daily, about 42, 43 years ago. And I've always enjoyed it. It's always helped me so much. But I'll tell you what, these last three and a half years, I wouldn't have made it through this without God's word just daily counseling me, giving me revelation, giving me counsel, giving me wisdom, giving me knowledge, giving me um, the power and fear of the Lord and giving me my power and authority and giving me the Holy Spirit. So I, I wouldn't have been able to get through these last three and a half years without God's word just indwelling in my heart and being able to go back and say, wait, is this what God said? What did he mean here? I took it this way for that time, but for this time, this is what I believe he's saying and having the Holy Spirit minister. So it's really been huge. So anyway, I know this is a political live, but as you know, Jesus is my foundation. So Jesus is always, always, always going to come up in conversation. I don't believe I've ever done a live or talked to anyone about anything without mentioning Jesus because he's always with me. He is in me. I am in him. I am just so thankful for his word. And hopefully as I speak, whatever it's about, even if it's about the weather, I pray that it brings glory to God. So, and in Southern California, it's easy to bring glory to God when you talk about the weather, other than the manipulation that the corrupt are doing, but we'll talk about that another time. Actually, we're going to talk about it today, ironically. Okay, 
So everything that's hidden will be revealed. It is happening like crazy. Okay, the, I'll just give you a couple examples. Hey, how about that? You guys want some examples? Yes, yes, yes. I want to see yes in the comments. You guys want some examples of God revealing what's done in the darkness? Things that are hidden that they never thought would be exposed? Yeah, it's ending up in jail cells, in prison cells, in prison terms here. Thank you. I love it. Thank you for putting the yes. I love when the yeses just flow in. When I ask you a question, when you guys engage and answer, I'll tell you what, that makes this all worth it to me because I know you're listening and I know you care what I'm saying when I'm asking. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. All right. So the Clinton aide who helped fabricate the Trump Russia hoax um, he pled guilty to treason and Russian collusion today. So, guys, he's going to prison for a very long time. I know that treason can actually um, carry the death penalty. So I don't know how it's going to be handled. I don't really care. Let's just get him out of our society. And let's go ahead and, and let him do a plea deal where he turns over p others who were involved and maybe for life in prison rather than the death penalty. And again, um, you know, I don't always have the mercy and grace of Jesus when it comes to certain things, but I try to, when people have done white collar crime, whatever, it's like, Hey, maybe they were starving. Maybe they're so caught up in the world. They think it's worth it to steal from their parents or their children or their business or whatever. And um, I, I believe that people can be transformed. But I also in my own life have seen murderers transformed into angels of light. I've seen murderers transformed into evangelical followers of Jesus who are changing lives in gangs and in other societal um, situations. So my, my point is, as the word says, we are not to judge in a condemning way. We're not to judge eternity on someone. Now that said, it clearly says we are to judge people's fruit. We are to judge people's actions. And I know there's such an urban myth out there that don't judge, don't judge. Oh my gosh, you said she shouldn't be living that lifestyle. He shouldn't be living that lifestyle. You said he shouldn't do this. You said, no, the word absolutely says not only should we judge, but we should exclude them from our Christian circles because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. If you agree with me, if you know that from God's word, I want you to put yes and amen in the comments because that is what God's word says over and over. It calls us to judge. And there is such an urban myth out there that we are not to judge. That is not what God's word says. And I've done full on Bible studies on this before. You can look back, maybe type it in. I don't know how that works. Um, I think Cheryl Murphy can help you because she's amazing at finding old posts. But I will tell you, um, the, the most people can't even name a scripture that they're talking about when they say we're not to judge. They don't even know anything about the Bible. They've just heard the urban myth, myth that we're not to judge. But I think when when Christians are using it, who actually know the Bible, they're saying, well, when Jesus said judge not, but that's not what he was talking about. He said, judge not lest you be judged by that same measure. What he's saying is, don't say don't steal if you're stealing. Because if you say don't steal to someone and you're stealing, you're going to be judged by that don't steal too. But what he goes on to say is, First, remove the speck in your own eye so you can see clearly to remove the speck in your brother's eye. That's a big difference than don't judge. Because Jesus says over and over and over, we are to judge. We are to judge fruit. We're fruit inspectors. Hey, if you, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. That's what the word of God says. The word of God says a bad tree cannot, um, cannot produce good fruit. So when you see bad fruit coming off someone who's claiming to be a Christian or a pastor or a leader, when they're producing bad fruit, you know there's something rotten at the root of that thing. And you better be judging it because Jesus goes on to say, don't even have 
breakfast with them. Don't even have dinner with them. Don't even eat with them. Don't even dine with them. Don't even relax with them. Cast them out. Treat them like an outsider. Love them into the fold. Speak truth. Continue to speak truth. But realize this person is not a brother or sister in the Lord. If their actions do not line up with God's word, and I'm not saying we don't ever blow it because we do, and I know, you know, hopefully you're getting more and more like Christ every day. Hopefully you're sinning less and less and less. But bottom line is, as long as we are in this mortal body, we are not going to be perfect. However, if we are covered by the blood, the spotless blood, blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, if we have accepted that free gift, then when God looks at us, he sees the blood of his son covering us and he welcomes us into his holy presence. You cannot be welcomed into the presence of God if you are spotted and filthy. That is the very definition of holiness. God wouldn't be holy if he accepted filthy spotted people in his presence. So he sent a redeemer to redeem us to himself. We, while we were yet sinners, yet Jesus died on the cross for our sins to cover us from all unrighteousness, to take our sins as far as the East is from the West. So, Know your Bible before you're out there telling people, don't judge. You better judge. You need to get up in the morning and judge. Am I going to read the word of God today? Am I going to worship today? Am I going to spend time with the Lord of Lords and King of Kings today? Am I going to go to work? Am I going to brush my teeth? Am I going to eat? We are judging all day long. We can't live without judging. We can be alive without judging. You could be brain dead and lying in a hospital bed and your body may still be breathing and your heart beating, but you have to make judgments every single day. It is part of the human experience. It's part of life. So anyway, if you get that, yes and amen in the comments. Thank you all who have already put that. I love it. All right. So DC is bringing in the National Guard uh, to deal with high crime, the crime in D.C., Chicago, Los Angeles, uh, Silicon Valley. I'm telling you, the crime in these places is so horrendous. Michigan, it's so bad in Michigan that Pritzker, I talked, or Illinois, rather, sorry. It's so bad in Illinois that Pritzker, the governor, wants to bring in illegal aliens to be cops because no one wants to be a cop in Illinois, not just Chicago, but all over the state. Absolutely crazy. That's how bad it is that cops have been treated terribly since the whole fake Floyd thing, the whole agenda of Floyd that was all part of a, what's interesting, it was a part of an Act Blue agenda, an Act Blue who developed the fake BLM so they could make lots and lots and lots of money. They're all white segregationists. They pretend to be this Black Lives Matter black group, but they're not. They're white segregationists. They're the, uh, they're basically the uh, KKK of the country. And yet you are all giving your money to them thinking that they were, oh, these poor blacks who couldn't get a job, so they deserve to burn down cities and steal. Why not? Wow, have people been duped. Really sad and pathetic. That's, those are people without wisdom. Those are people without knowledge and counsel and understanding who just fall for this stuff. So anyway, D.C. is bringing in the National Guard to deal with high crime. Also, Nashville is bringing in 800 soldiers and airmen to deal with homelessness, crime, and um, other filth issues in Nashville. And it doesn't say, it didn't say Tennessee's bringing in 800 soldiers and airmen. It said Nashville is. That's a lot of people for the city of Nashville. It's a lot of soldiers and airmen. 
So I wanted to bring this up because President Trump always, always, always keeps his promises. And anyone who thinks President Trump doesn't keep his promises, you need to turn off mainstream media and you need to actually look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. We were um, energy, completely energy independent. We had the highest stock market, the best the most thriving economy, um, just so, I mean, so many things I could list his accomplishments forever. He'll do that himself if you watch one of his rallies, but just the way things were going were so amazing. Um, but anyway, in 2022, so this is after he was apparently out of office, as I've said, he's still our commander in chief. You don't have to believe that if you don't want to. It doesn't make any difference to me. But um, what I want to share is what he said in November of 22. He said, we are going to decimate street crime, tear down bad, ugly buildings, take homeless, take the homeless to FEMA camps to get them the help they deserve. And he said, it's not fair for law-abiding citizens to walk down filthy streets. Well, I'll tell you what, that's happening now. Do you think that's Biden doing that? Or do you think that's Trump who made that promise in November of 22, less than a year ago? Who do you think is doing it? They're now sending in National Guard and soldiers and airmen to these filthy blue cities. Isn't it interesting? They're all blue cities that are so filthy disgusting, overrun by illegals, overrun by crime and terrorists and homeless and everything. And I have, there are different types of homeless people, guys. There are different types. Some are victims of a system that has caused them to do things and see things they, that God never intended. And others are just lazy people trying to take advantage of the system. Okay, and you can argue with me all day long, say I'm not compassionate. I'm probably the most compassionate person you know. I don't think anyone who's actually struggling shouldn't have help by our government. That's what our government's for. And actually, I think they should first have help from our churches. That's what the church is for. But when so many people, have you all, have you guys found, and this is another answer this yes or no, but have you found as I have that the people who actually need help are always too humble or um, ashamed to ask for help? And those who are taking all the freebies are usually the people who could get out there and get a job on their own. Now I get, and even, you know, there are different times in life. I get when a young woman with small children, suddenly her husband leaves her because he wants something better and he's deceived by the devil himself. Okay, I, I, I want to be able to help her. I want to be able to help them. Um, or a, or a, even a young healthy man who has an accident or something happens or a sickness or an illness where suddenly they can't work. That is what our government and our churches are for. Let's take care of those people. But for people who are perfectly capable and it's easier for them just to come to California and get freebies, sorry, I don't, I don't want to support them at all. It's like, hey, I worked my entire life and paid a lot of, a lot of money for education and finances to get my money to work for me. And, um, you know, is it really fair that some people just get everything free because they're lazy? I don't know. Let me know whether you agree with me or not. Agreed, yes. Put agreed or disagree. I love it. And it's okay for you to disagree. I get that not everyone thinks the way I do. Man, what a boring world it would be if we all thought exactly like I did. I love to be challenged with a good debate. I don't like to be attacked because someone has zero defense for what, for not believing what I believe. They just don't want to agree with me. That's called an argumentative person and I have no time for them. All right. Um, so 
uh, a huge global sex trafficking ring called Operation Bacchus um, without the approval of Chris Ray, whom I've heard is a trafficker. I don't have any I don't have any proof of that. Chris Ray, Christopher Ray is the um, director of the FBI. He has been called a trafficker by people who should know. However, I have not seen any proof, so I'm going to let you leave that to your own imagination. Um, but he did not give his approval for this huge sting operation, which unfortunately two FBI agents were killed, but there were over 100 arrests and over 16 children rescued. Remember what I've told you before, I've been involved in anti-trafficking for 20 years. Before people even realized there was trafficking in our country, I've been involved. And I will tell you that when they say 16 children rescued, that's because 16, those 16 children were reported missing. They do not count the nameless who have not been reported missing. The Those who ran away from home and their parents never mentioned them, no one ever looked for them. Those who were bred in dumbs beneath the earth, they're not counted. So when they say 16, over 16 children were rescued, that means 16 children whose parents or loved ones reported them missing. That means there were a lot more than just 16. So that was a good, good, well, one child rescued would be worth it, right? All right. Um, anyway, that is... Operation Bacchus, B-A-K-I-S, you can look it up for yourself. Okay, today I want to um, I want to give you a couple of quotes from our favorite president. So in 2016, I mean, sorry, in November of 2022, he said that about we are going to decimate street crime, tear down ugly bad buildings, and that it shouldn't, and put, um, put people in FEMA camps who need help so they can help them. So that was in November of 2022. Today he said, quote, we will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic operation in American history. That is good news, guys. I hope you are paying attention. Um, President Trump signed orders to put the government on pause. Actually, I'm gonna get back to this in just a moment, okay? I'm gonna get back to this in just a moment. You guys are seeing major weather warnings around the country. The weather craziness, HARP, is mobilizing against red states. So the blue states are just full of crime and homelessness and just disgusting tents everywhere. You guys know I just spent the last week in Hollywood. It is, you know, tents under the bridges. Parts of Hollywood have actually been cleaned up. Hollywood's actually better than downtown Los Angeles. Um, it looks like they do have a mayor now who is trying to keep the homelessness out. But downtown Los Angeles and near LAX is just absolutely unbelievable. Just the homeless encampments lining the streets for miles and miles. All the blue states, they call them blue states because they have blue politicians and representatives in charge, even though those people did not get there in most situations, did not get there by we the people voting. They were put in there illegally with corrupt methods, okay? Don't get that wrong. It isn't we the people who wanted them in there. They got in there, they took their positions. They were not elected to those positions. So anyway, um, the blue states are just totally corrupt and the crime and the homelessness and the filth However, um, HARP has mobilized weather warfare against the red states. Tornadoes and first fierce storms are happening everywhere. Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, WEF, are calling for a great global famine. 
great global famine. Remember, Joe Biden is a huge part of World Economic Forum. He actually adopted their term, Build Back Better. That is the World Economic Forum, the WEF, Klaus Schwab, the communist himself. That's their saying. And Biden adopted it for his own campaign, Build Back Better. And they think better is depopulation and new world order. Don't be deceived. They think Build Back Better is major trafficking, lots of laundry rooms to launder their filth and get rid of the middle class. That's what they believe. Don't be deceived. It's all documented and it's all on my Telegram channel. All right, so they're calling for a great global famine. Of course, Gates is ready with fake food pills that you can survive barely survive, but you can be slaves eating Gates fake food pills that he's already developed for this global famine that is part of the Agenda 2030 that they've all planned. Um, Kim Jong-un is vowing preparation for war. I've been told, I've told you what my military sources have said, prepare for World War III. It'll look like it, but it won't actually be World War III, but people are going to be convinced that it is. So Kim Jong-un, all in plan, is preparing for World War III. He made a public statement to that effect. Now, I want to give you a little bit more of the revelation, things being revealed, done in the dark, that are revealed, that are hidden and come to light. New J6 footage clearly shows that Pelosi slowly evacuated the building while her daughter filmed it all for a documentary she was doing. This is all coming out, guys. It's all coming out. Um, there's also footage of DC police, a DC police, DC police, which they're a lot of, most of them are pretty honorable, but some aren't. The Mayor Bowser on J6 actually sent home or unscheduled those who were honorable and brought in her own buddies that would be bribed or threatened or whatever. So there is new J6 footage, video footage that shows a DC police call in which he is saying, we go undercover as Antifa in the crowd. Guys, this is all being exposed. There's more than enough evidence for everything that President Trump has claimed, and yet there is such a heavy, corrupt stance against him because they know their laundry rooms and their lives themselves are done when the American people understand the reality of what's happened over the last three and a half years, let alone the last five decades. All right. Um, so there is more talk of the Biden impeachment. There is more than enough evidence against him, including his own admissions. He said that he committed treason against the U.S. with foreign, foreign agents. He admitted it. I watched him say it. Um, of course, the media didn't know he was going to say it. That's why they didn't cut off the cameras like they normally do. Okay, scientists have confirmed that the CoV mRNA drastically alters. I want to tell you, they said in quotes, drastically alters your personality due to extensive damage they do to the small capillaries in the brain. They're saying that when you get the V and every boost afterward, it drastically alters your personality. So if you have friends and family who seem to be crazier than ever, it's not your imagination. They clearly are. It is scientific. This is the CIIC. This is the, this is a scientific um, group of worldwide doctors who study um, scientific evidence of things that happen. And um, yeah, it's absolutely am amazing. It might be CICI. Anyway, I will get that organization for you. It's amazing, well-respected, peer-reviewed doctors and scientists who 
have said that. They have all joined together in admitting that is the truth. And we can see it anyway, right? We can see it. All right, Intel. Whoa. Craziness. The Intel chief of Kazakhstan, he happens to be Hunter's close friend and by Joe's friend and Hunter's close friend. He was charged with treason today. He was charged with treason. Yeah, this is Hunter's close friend and Joe's friend. We don't know how close he was with Joe, but he was very close with Hunter and appeared in a lot of photographs with Joe and Hunter. So Hunt, Joe actually definitely knew him. The CPI is tomorrow. I, for whatever reason, they postponed it. Bill just found it for me, and they are releasing it tomorrow. The CPI and then the PPI, the producer price index, will be out Friday. Um, consumer price index will be out tomorrow. Guys, be ready for a stock market crash. Now, I know they're still manipulating the stock market, so they may be able to continue to manipulate after this comes out tomorrow. But from what I understand is they're actually going to admit to some of the inflation and unemployment that's true. They've been lying and hiding it, and they're going to try to admit to a little because they get that we're not all stupid and people are going to figure out we still have inflation and still have unemployment since there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people out of work, newly out of work, and it's in mainstream media, so they can't really keep it hidden. So they're trying to figure out, which is probably why they delayed it by three days. They, they're trying to figure out how to reveal it and twist it in a way that isn't going to panic anyone. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be Tuesday. So I want to talk about Trump's incredible brilliance. He is being Indicted for interference in 2020E, you know what happened on November 3rd, 2020. He's being indicted for that. Therefore, he is now able to bring in voir dire and all the evidence in discovery. So remember, the, the importance of voir dire is they choose a jury. Every one of these indictments against President Trump They've not only only chosen Dems, no Republicans whatsoever, but they actually ask questions before they even make them part of the jury pool to make sure that they hate President Trump. They do not invite any Trump lovers to these juries. So voir dire is going to be exposed as well as um, the entire questioning um, whoa. Yeah, discovery is going to be public record because he can have his own, he gets to have his own discovery now that they are trying to indict him for e-fraud in 2020. I love it because Trump is brilliant. This is one of the 5D chess moods. So now I'm going to go back and share what my friend, military high up, this is not... So again, some of you are like, oh yeah, you say you get um, classified. No, I have never told you I got classified info. As a matter of fact, multiple times I have said I do not receive classified intel. I actually have been offered classified intel from a couple of people whom I no longer even communicate with. I don't want classified intel. First of all, if someone's offering it to me, I know either they one have no integrity and they're trying to impress me, or they are a plant. So I don't accept classified intel from anyone, and my sources whom I use regularly are not giving me classified intel. They are giving me very important intel that they give me permission to share with you because we all need to know it, and yet mainstream media is keeping it silent. So this is for encouragement, and let me tell you what it is. I just have to find the beginning of it, my notes. You guys know what my notes look like, right? I don't know if you know the time and effort I put into this stuff, but I've literally got pages upon pages upon pages upon books and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of notes. This is what I do all day long just to make you happy. 
and to encourage you and to bring you truth and justice and to wake you up and give you truth for your friends and family. This is just, I mean, th this is just one. I've literally got about 175 of these full-on pads of stuff that I've written up for you in the last three and a half years. So let me share, um, if I can find the beginning of it. Okay. President Trump signed orders to put the government on pause. Now remember that, I've talked about this before, the war orders, the all the things that he did when it looked like fake Biden had fakely been implemented into the presidency, into the fake presidency. Um, President Trump continued as he worked out the rest of his public term to pass executive orders. And that's what really made me like, hey, what's going on? Why is he doing this? So he signed orders to put the government on pause. He signed continuity of government orders, COG which you've heard about. I've talked about at length. He is behind, so this is what, this is a quote from my friend, and I'll start at the beginning. President Trump signed orders to put the government on pause. He is still acting in continuity of government. He is behind a 5D chess game, a global psyop, to wake up Americans to the infiltration of every area of life, including medical, financial, personal, and even religious life. He is correcting every form of global corruption, all while saving the children. We are 100% reaching the precipice. The storm is here. President Trump is the storm. It had to be this way. Blackout warnings in California and Kentucky. So I am telling you, because I know you have family in both places and also in New York, which I also have a kind of adopted daughter in New York and Long Island. So blackout warnings in California, Kentucky, and New York. Um, that's it in the, I don't know, maybe the, maybe he only gave me those states because that's where I have family. I forgot to ask him because we went on to talk about some other things that are happening that I'm not going to share at this point. It's not that I'm trying to keep it from you. I'm just trying to, I don't share anything that I don't have total confidence in and um, at least two witnesses saying the same thing. So some of the stuff that we talked about after this quote, I need to confirm before I share it with you, but it is very good news. You, Many of you are going to be very, very happy. Do you want me to read that again? Put it in the comments, If just put again if you want me to read that again. I know sometimes I speak fast. I'm so excited that I may not speak perfectly clearly. I do try to enunciate as a someone who used to speak on stages prior to the big COVID scare, the big scamdemic. You want me to say it again? Okay, great. So many of you, I love it. Okay, I will say it again. This is all quote from my friend and um, and your friend. He does care about you because he always tells me you need to let your followers know this. And I know that he has friends who have millions of followers and yet he keeps me in the loop. And I literally have maybe just over 100,000 followers and, um, you know, I'm not a big deal, but he's still, I so appreciate the fact that he keeps me in the loop. So here's the quote. And sometimes you'll say, oh, so-and-so said that similar thing. Sometimes you say it's exactly the same, which I know it isn't because it's one person stating it to me on the phone. So everyone says something a little different, but that's just because this same, my same sources are also sources for a few other people with a whole lot of followers. So then if their followers have any kind of a show, they're sharing, it's kind of like that old operator um, thing that you played in junior high or elementary school. But anyway, I'm gonna give you the quote that he said, President Trump signed orders to put the government on pause. 
He is still under continuity of government, COG. He actually said COG, continuity of government. He's behind a 5D chess game, a global psyop, to wake up Americans to the infiltration of every area of life, including medical, financial, personal, and even religious life. He is correcting every form of global corruption, all while saving the children. We are 100% reaching the precipice. The storm is here. President Trump is the storm. It had to be this way. Blackout warnings in California and Kentucky. I'm sharing because I know you have because I know you have family in both places. Also blackout warnings in New York. Get ready to rejoice. End quote. That is it. So I hope you're encouraged. I know I went a little long again. I hope you don't mind. I love you all. I'm telling you, um, the cabal is still at work. They are using weather warfare through HARP and NASA. That's H-A-A-R-P if you want to look it up. H-A-A-R-P and N-A-S-A. Harp and NASA, look up, type in geoengineering. You will see they are using dues, which are direct energy weapons, to start fires all over the country. They are using all kinds of methods to cause tornadoes and hurricanes and floods and rain and storms and lightning and fires and look it up, it's all government records. So they are doing that as a last ditch effort because they know their time is short. What does Satan do when he knows his time is short? He activates all his little minions to do everything they can to try to scare people. Do not be afraid. First of all, let me, let me clarify that before I go. The Bible does not say do not be afraid 360 times five times, one time for each day. That is not true. That is an urban myth. Now, that said, it does say it, do not be afraid or fear not, 70 times in the Bible, which is not 365. It does say it 70 times in the Bible. So stop spreading rumors because the problem is when you share these things because you've heard it so many times, you believe it's true, do you know that that is how the C underscore A works? They know that if they keep repeating something, your mind believes it. That is what we call Operation Mockingbird. Every story, every mainstream media channel says the same thing. Trump is guilty, Trump is guilty, Trump is guilty. Even people who didn't believe it at first, even people who have seen evidence, their brain, it's, it's, it's like God showed me this when we had our farm in Kentucky. It's like the cows forging a path through the alfalfa. So many cows go through it, pretty soon it's a road. It's a full-on dirt path through beautiful lush green alfalfa. That's what happens in our brain. And, you know, Caroline Leaf is amazing. Um, Dr. Randall Blaylock, just look at some of these incredible neurosurgeons who will talk and neurologists who will, and neuroscience lovers, which I am, that will share these things of how our brains work. But when they keep repeating things, and that's why they formed Operation Mockingbird, because they keep saying the same thing over and over again. So you believe it, your brain believes it, even if your, your consciousness doesn't believe it, your subconscious does, because it's just over and over and over, you believe it's true. So when it comes to something Christian, and you believe that the Bible has fear not or do not be afraid 365 times because that's what you've been told over and over by people you respect, then when you share that with an atheist or an agnostic or someone or, or a Christian like myself, I'll actually say, could you show me that? Because I've been studying the Bible for 43 years and I can only find it 70 times. I've researched this multiple times because so many people say it's in there 365 times, but I don't think that's true. Then you look like an idiot, and if if I don't happen to be a Christian, 
if I don't happen to believe the word of God, then I think you're a liar and the God, word of God therefore is not true. So just be careful. I know no one does it out of um, evil. It's just like, oh, wow, every day, do not be afraid. It's so important to God. It's very important to God. If he repeated it 70 times in the word of God, in 66 books, it's said 70 times. That's a lot. That's enough. You don't need to exaggerate God's word. God's word is amazing on its own. It is sharp and powerful and can divide soul from spirit. It can, it can expose the intents of the heart. We don't have to exaggerate. So just wanted to share that. Um, yeah, God wins. And look, God won. I don't know if you can read it. But God won. Thank you, Maria. One of my favorite hats. Every time I wear one of Maria's hats, I say, one of my favorite hats. And my General Flynn's hat that Charlita sent me, I absolutely love. It says, fight like a Flynn. And I love that hat, too. And I've never been a hat wearer. But since you guys have been sending me hats, it's like, I love them. So I need to wear them all the time. That's why you see me in hats all the time. Because my amazing follower, Maria, um, yeah, she makes these beautiful hats for me. Cowboy hats and baseball caps. My two favorite types of hats. So um, unbelievable. Love it. So God bless you all. Lord, we lift up President Trump, Eric Trump, Don Jr., and the Trump families. We lift up every... We lift up Hollywood Prayer Network and everyone involved who is praying for Hollywood to flip upside down so that, or right side up, so that Hollywood, the most influential mission field in the entire world, is bringing truth and light to their communities. We thank you for everyone praying for them, everyone involved. We thank you a special blessing on Kieran and Jim Cavell and their beautiful sons, Chris and Cameron. Lord, we pray for every producer, director, um, actor, writer, set designer, uh, wardrobe designer, consultant, script consultant, everyone who's involved in what we call global Hollywood, we pray for them that you would give them the boldness to step out in truth and make good movies that not only entertain, but bring truth and light into dark houses, dark places, dark theaters, dark cities. We love you, Lord. We do ask for every pastor who's speaking truth to be emboldened to speak more truth. We ask you to tear down any churches where pastors are not willing to get on board with your agenda, but they are so set on their agendas. Take down their churches. Take away their people who are giving money and put that money toward those who are actually bringing real truth. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you. And um, we just ask you to go before us, beside us, and behind us. Be our rear guard, Lord. You are amazing. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, guys, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Hey, Marianne, speaking of godly, Larry, Dawn, Debbie, just such amazing people. Paulette, so great to see you all. And Lord willing, I will see you tomorrow live at probably four, but I'll let you know. This is working a little better than the algorithm than trying to go live at five. I'd like to go back to live at five if the algorithm changes, but we'll see. So please do like, comment, and share, share, share. I appreciate you guys who have shared because when you share, um, people who can't see it because Facebook is hiding it, YouTube is hiding it, Twitter is hiding it, everyone's hiding my stuff. So when you share, you get it to people who can't find me otherwise. And then also, if you do appreciate my content, please consider giving a small donation. Um, you can give either PayPal or Venmo. Of course, you don't have to. And if you can't afford to, do not. I don't want anyone taking food out of their mouths to donate. But if you do like what I do and you can afford a small donation, please do. And um, yeah, that's it. I'm super excited for what's coming next. I have been working on my book all about worship. And um, I'm super 
God's ministering to me as I write, which he always does. This will be my ninth book, I believe. And um, God's ministering to me as I'm praying and asking the Holy Spirit for wisdom, writing it. God is speaking to me big time. So I'm really excited. And one of the reasons I'm asking for donations, which I know I've never done before, um, is that I'm hoping to have it published by a traditional publisher. I do not want to use an Amazon. Amazon has completely screwed me. Um, forgive the language. I don't know how else to say it. And they have done some terrible things. They have terrible things written into their contracts that basically they can steal your work and they can collect the money on it. If you decide you do no longer want to publish on Amazon, they can continue to sell your book and they keep the money rather than giving any to you. So, um, yeah, it's just check out Amazon before you decide to use them. I know I have recommended them for years. They were great to me for years. And... Um, I just, I'm hoping this book on worship, I can self, I don't want to self-publish. I want to use a traditional publisher. So if you guys are one, or if you can connect me with one, I believe this book on worship so needs to be out there. God has put it on my heart for 10 years. He has really upped my game over the last few months. And specifically while I was in Hollywood this past week, God literally Kind of, I kind of had a come to Jesus moment where I realized if I don't sit down and write this book, I am in disobedience and I never, ever want to be, I never want to disobey. I always want to, and I can no longer use the excuse that I'm too busy, Lord, because the Lord knows my schedule exactly. And um, he's still calling me to write this. So it will take away some of the time that I put into getting phone calls and research and everything for you guys, but I do believe it's the Lord's heart to get this book out there. So if you know of a publisher, if you um, are a publisher, please contact me. Um, and if you want to support publishing a book on worship, before you give me any support, you're welcome to read the, um, the book because I won't be paying a publisher until I'm done. But I've come a long way in two days because God is just giving me wisdom. And um, let me just say, I have spent more than 25,000 hours on it. I don't know how many hours it takes to become an expert, but worship is my passion. So I know a lot about it. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. I know what God's word says, which is even more important. So I think it's very important for especially the younger generation to understand what does God say about, what is God's heart toward worship? And are we doing it right? Because if we're not, what's the point? Anyone can go to a concert. So God bless you all. Um, yeah, I love you so much and love my new friends who are joining me. It's just, God bless you. I'm so thankful that you're here. Every single one of you who's here, I am thankful for you. Whether you agree with me or not on anything, I am thankful that you're here and there's no coincidence with God. So God bless you. I'm going to eat dinner so I can get back to writing my book. And I love you all. Take care.